Hey there. You might be curious about electric vehicle range or considering buying an Ionic 5. This is a 2025 model or if you're my American friends, you might say it's a 2026 model because that's something you guys do. I don't know why, but you just do. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna actually go over what factors affect range, obviously, because you know all cars have range affected by something. And yeah, do a big long trip all the way down to Geelong, Bellarine Peninsula, and I don't know where, so I can't tell you exactly where right now. And we'll, we'll see how we go, right? The car currently has 85% battery, and it says it's got 401 kilometers of range. To date, I've been driving it for the last three days, and I've done 48 kilometers, and it's averaging 17.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. For my petrol diesel friends, that's equivalent to your liters per 100K, okay? It's a very hot day in Melbourne. I'm not gonna do anything unusual. I'm not gonna drive efficiently. I'm gonna keep the aircon at a comfortable level, so right now it's set to 21. But I'm not gonna bore you with me talking all the time, so let's get down to Geelong, to Little Creatures, and uh, get us some great beer. We've arrived at Little Creatures in Geelong, and let's have a look. Uh, it says we've done 78.3 kilometers and we have 312 kilometers of range left. Realistically, that's supposed to be around 320. Remembering, I left with 400 and now we're at 312. So it's used more, eight kilometers more than it probably should have, okay? And efficiency-wise, it's actually doing really well. 13.9 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. It's actually rated at 17 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. So, that was a really efficient drive for what was predominantly a 100k per hour drive all the way here. Uh, Aircon set to 22, normal mode, regen on, I was using cruise control, and there was a blustery wind, a lot of winds, it was came from the side, came from the front, um, it was definitely a challenge for this car. So it, it used more energy than it should have, uh, despite the, it's running efficiently. So. Why is that? Okay, we'll explore exactly why it is later on. But now, let's go get some yummy beer. Because seriously, uh, little, little Creatures IPA is best, really is. 12 seconds later. Lunch is done and had a great uh, pot, pot, yeah, small one, uh, of the Hazy IPA. Again, love that beer, great beer. Really well priced food and the burger I had was awesome. I just, <laughs> I forgot to video when it came out. So I took this photograph, uh, which I put on Google uh, reviews by the way. And um, then afterwards, this, this is all that was left of it and it was very good, very good. Now, after my, before we had lunch, I actually did um, tell you the right numbers, but when I turned the car off and I forgot to get the shot of what the range was, I forgot to get the, the picture. So I turned the car back on and it went from 310 kilometers to 294, what it says now. So I don't understand what the heck's that about. But anyway, um, there you go. Very, very perplexing. But again, it's about the long journey. It's not just about the short bit. Um, onwards we go to the Bellarine Distillery. Yes, Bellarine Distillery. For what I would say is some of Australia's best gin. Um, and uh, so there's about 25 minute drive from here, not very far. I guess I should program it in to good old Google. Navigate to the Ballerine Distillery. Stop number two, and we've been driving for one hour and 37 minutes, 103 kilometers, and averaging now 15 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. Uh, so, 262 kilometers. It's getting worse as, as this journey goes on, isn't it? Okay. Um, sometimes looking at kilometers on the range you have left on your car, it's probably the worst thing you can do. And the great thing that most electric vehicles do, or some do rather, is they show the percentage of battery left. And I really do recommend you use that and not show your range because you'll quickly get used to, gee, my battery is now at 15%. I better charge it and that's comfortable for you, okay? But for other people, when they think of it like, gee, I've only got 15 kilometers of range left, oh, it's anxiety producing, yeah? So, I wanna just, here's a top tip for you. If you can, have your car show you the percentage of battery only and not the range remaining, because um, 
it's uh, it, it will give you anxiety galore because what I'm trying to demonstrate in this video is that for a lot of mixed driving, predominantly freeway, highway driving on a very windy day, a hot day, um, the average consumption, the average efficiency rather, is the important number here. So anyway, we have arrived at the Bellarine Distillery. They make great gin. Teddy and the Fox is the one to buy, <laughs> by the way. So let's get in there and um, we will continue on our journey. We just had the most beautiful cheese board and we demolished most of this thing. There was only two of us, so I'm feeling quite bloated and bad right now. But I've got my favorite Teddy and the Fox. Thank you to the Bellarine Distillery. Well, I paid for it. I didn't get it free, I wish I did. Anyway, uh, I want to show my brother who's currently filming, thanks Andrew, uh, a little party trick that this car can do. Now, it's remote summon, but it's not like through your uh, mobile phone like Tesla's can do. It's uh, done through this, so come over here. Something I wish here and they would do is you've got to turn the car on first, so just press and hold this button, which I've done. And I think the car is on now, I'm not very sure. And with these little side buttons, they can go backwards and forwards. I'm just checking to see if it's on. No, no, it's gotta be locked. All right, let's try that again. Yeah, now it's on. Okay, so this car, when it's going backwards or forwards, it will move slightly to go around something if it's in the way, but otherwise it's just gonna go backwards and forwards direct, okay, so. So it should stop. Yeah, there we go. And then if I bring it forwards, I'll show you it actually trying to go around me, yeah? So let's just go forwards. I'll stand here-ish. No, it stopped. Go back. It's got enough space. I got a bit more there. Nah, doesn't want to do it. Anyway, it's pretty basic and yeah, it's all done through here. It's nothing special like a Tesla. All right, let's get back in the car and let's talk about some factors that influence your economy or your range. Yeah, your range. Okay, I've cut this video here because, well, the stuff I did in the car and when I ended up near my place went on for way too long. So I'm going to get to the, uh, the crux of the matter and explain everything about fuel efficiency and how range is affected and so forth. Okay. But first, have you subscribed? Because if you do, it really does help out the channel. It means that companies like Hyundai, uh, let me make these stories for you. And I really do appreciate your support in that way. Sharing with friends also, especially those skeptics. Yeah, do that as well, please. And otherwise, hey, are you going to the Everything Electric show in what's number one show in Australia? It's all about energy, electric vehicles. You can do test drives, there's talks, there's tech there, and it's taking place in Sydney between March 7 and 9. It's gonna be packed with attractions, with live experts like me, where we're gonna have discussions. There's scores of companies there displaying clean, clean home energy products. I myself will be talking uh, on a panel with uh, Robert and many other great Aussies about electric vehicle myths. So again, I really hope to see you there. Use this code, EESydney20, yeah? And you can save on your tickets to get there. All right, that said, let's check out the results. And it's gonna shock you, or maybe not, but first, some amazing facts about fuel efficiency and how this isn't a problem reserved just for electric vehicles. No matter what type of car you drive, petrol, diesel, hydrogen, hybrid, electric, your fuel economy, and I'll spread that term widely here, will be affected by how aerodynamic and heavy your vehicle is. For example, if you drive a Mercedes-Benz EQS, Tesla Model S, uh, Lucid Air, or a Xiaomi uh, SU7, They'll be slicing through the air, meeting little resistance with a low drag coefficient of about two or so. That means less fuel is used to drive that car. If you opt for a brick like a truck or an SUV with a face that only a mother can love, you'll be suffering and costing yourself a fortune in fuel bills. 
the Ram 1500 TRX, this beast, will probably consume upwards of 20 litres per 100 kilometres, realistically about 25 litres per 100 kilometres in real world conditions. Or maybe you're, you're fortunate enough to drive a Bugatti uh, Chiron Supersport, and you can expect this to do about 20 to 30 litres per 100 kilometres, possibly even harder under fast or hard driving conditions. You may have seen Top Gear episodes where the team would drive one of these supercars at the fastest speeds. And how long did they last before they needed to be refueled? Seriously, about 45 minutes or an hour. So yeah, there are many factors that well, can affect fuel economy, but there's many more. So let's start with like wind on the car, as well as the wind that you try to cut through and as you increase your speed. If you're driving in windy conditions with speeds up to about 30 to 50 kilometers per hour, the impact on economy becomes significant and you'll see a drop by about 10% or more in fuel efficiency. Ambient air pressure is also important. And um, if you have I got you paying attention here because the weather forecast is now important. Colder air, denser air uh, means uh, there's slightly more resistance for a vehicle to have to cut through and that will lead to increased fuel usage. However, this effect is generally less significant than the impact of tire pressure, which is also crucial to good fuel economy. And another significant factor, and one to be mindful of when you see you know, someone having a jab at maybe you in some sort of forum saying something like, gee, your fuel efficiency is really bad. I get five liters per 100 kilometers. Yeah, well, maybe that's because they live in a city or the country, or maybe they actually drive really fast all the time. And, or maybe it's because they live up a hill or a mountain, which can have a significant effect on fuel economy, such as less dense air, and that means less resistance against your vehicle as it moves. This can actually improve fuel efficiency, especially at high speeds. But if you drive a petrol or diesel vehicle, that less dense air means that you have less oxygen for your engine to burn its fuel. And that can reduce engine power, especially in naturally aspirated non-turbocharged engines. And it can lead to decreased fuel efficiency, especially when climbing hills or accelerating. Obviously, going uphill will affect range, but you might get some savings when you go back down if you maybe coast your car, put it in neutral say, or you let regen do its thing in electric vehicles. For those who have done it, driving electric vehicle from Sutton Forest to Sydney will testify that they'll get about 100 to 150 kilometers of additional range just because of regen. So if you're wondering why your range will never match what the car sticker says, and please, for the love of all things good in the world, throw out that sticker when you get your car. There are many factors that affect how far you can go. Why your remaining range will ultimately be uh, decided by so many different factors. So with that out the way and remembering it was a hot day, which is maybe not so good for electric cars because they have to keep the battery just right. And it's also very, and it was also very windy. That's also not good for any car actually. So how did the Ionic 5 go? Round trip was 229 kilometers, three hours and 40 minutes of driving. That's an average of 17.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. I started with 400 kilometers of range with 85% of the battery and ended up with just 71 kilometers of range and 21% of the battery remaining. Wait, what? Simple math? Yeah, 400 kilometers minus 229. I should have 170 kilometers of range, right? But no, what's going on? Well, the answer is hidden. And I think this is what most cars do this day. They average your economy based upon the last X number of kilometers that you have just driven. We saw this along the drive. At the first stop, it was only about 10 kilometers off. At the second stop, it was about 30 kilometers uh, out more than we expected. And when it was all done, it was a full 100 kilometers of what it should have been with its claimed efficiency or actual actual efficiency of 17.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So basically the car was having to guess that if we were to keep driving in those hot windy conditions at about 100 kilometers an hour, you can only expect to get 71 kilometers more range. But if I had stopped there, maybe jumped in the car the next day, it might reset that predicted range and show 80 or 100 kilometers. So Here's my takeaway for you. 
all vehicle range is affected by multiple things. All vehicles predict remaining range due to the way it assumes your most recent drive is going to be representative of what you're about to do. If you're a lead foot, yeah, bad economy. Heavy, massive flat front, mm, you've got to use more fuel. Going up hills or driving in less than ideal conditions, that's going to cost you. So when it's all said and done, the claimed efficiency of the Hyundai Ioniq 5 of 17 kilowatt-hours per 100 kilometers is actually pretty accurate. After one week of driving, it was almost 500 kilometers, and it uh, still was showing this average. And that means for the smaller battery pack, you can expect between 365 to 400 kilometers of range on a full charge. So I hope that explains um, you know, what's happened here and also how your range might be affected too. And if that has been helpful to you, please, again, consider subscribing. Super thanks is really appreciated for early access behind the scenes and stuff like that. Think about Kofi and otherwise, if you might want to watch out one of these videos because YouTube thinks maybe they're useful for you. Maybe, I don't know. Otherwise, I'll see you real soon.